since I can remember, I've had a, a, an interest in birds. My father would bring me out into the, the woodlands and the countryside and the pram. So before I could even talk, he was imitating different bird sounds and animal sounds. And he would ask me what sound he's making. So my father loves birds, my grandfather loved birds, and the same followed with me. Oh yeah, that's brilliant. It's only the second time I've heard it in Ireland. And it's the first recording I've gotten of one drumming. It's like a drug to me, you know, it's, it makes me feel, you know, really excited. It's just brilliant. Something like that, especially, you know, it's a special sound because w woodpeckers are something that I didn't grow up with in Ireland. It's a, it's a new, it's a new thing. There's an online, uh, almost like an encyclopedia of bird sounds called Zeno Canto and what that allows is for people to upload bird sounds from anywhere in the world. And when I looked at the Irish contributions, they were really low. Things as common as mallard weren't even recorded yet. So I knew that I had something, you know, an interesting project that I could take on board. I'm aiming to record all of the regularly occurring bird species in Ireland. At the moment, as it stands, I have recorded, I think it's either 154 or 155 species. So I have, you know, more or less 50 species left to go. This is an autonomous recording device. So what I do with this is I just, I set this up beforehand at home on the computer and I can tell it when to start recording and when to stop. So I let them in areas where there's uh, known migration of birds in particular nocturnal migration. A lot of birds mimic other species. You can learn a lot from bird mimicry and I'll give you an example. There's a species we have called common white throat which actually winters south of the Sahara and then in the spring it will migrate north again. And if you happen to find one of these on the coast well, not long after it's arrived, it will still be mimicking species that are heard in Africa and species it heard along the, the migratory route it took. So listening to this and identifying the species it mimics, you can see where it's wintered and which route it took up through the Mediterranean before it got here. So this is, this is something that I only started to look into last year and it's, it's been really, really fascinating. You can track individuals based on their vocalizations. It's almost like a fingerprint. They have different dialects, like almost like accents. So, you know, a wren on mizzen head will sing their song one way. And there's this thing called song sharing. So birds in a particular area, they'll hear each other and they mimic the song. So it's like an accent, it's like a dialect. And then let's say you drove sometimes 10 minutes up the road, you listen to that population and they'll have a slightly different twist on the same, the same song. You walk up in a mountain in Ireland and you think, wow, this is so beautiful, it's so... It's not though, it's not how it's meant to look. There should be forests on our mountains, uh, everywhere. Unfortunately, there seems to be somewhat of a, a war on the, the remaining patches of, of biodiversity we have, especially in the last two years. And by that I mean destruction and, and removal of, of hedgerows and tree lines, which are really important refuges for, for birds. So this is something that we really need to act on and, and have a look at. As time goes on, I'm becoming more and more aware of these things. And, you know, it's very easy to kind of point the finger at people. Hey, did you hear that? It's brambling. It's not common. That's a species which breeds in the forests of Scandinavia. We get small numbers every year, but this year there's been an influx. Yeah, so I'll, I'll see if you can hear this. So this nasal sound here, it's gonna repeat. Here. 
So it's a very distinctive sound. That's actually the first time I've recorded that species as well. So it's, it was fairly unexpected. Bird sound is another way to reach out to people and, and make them realize what we have and what we can lose, what we are losing. I think that it's just such a beautiful thing to be able to step outside and listen to all of this, this natural sound. It's, it's all around us, it's free. And you know, the more, the more we know about it and the more we can appreciate it, the less likely it is that we're gonna let it disappear. Yeah, it's perfect. Really happy. Yep.